Hey, welcome to Tech Football Talk. I'm your host, Jeremy Lockby. Once again, joined by my brother Clint in this episode, talking the linebacker core, coached by Jeff Choate, former head coach of Montana State. How you doing, brother? Hey, pretty good, man. Uh, anytime that you can pull a, a head coach from a- any school to come to come be your uh, linebacker coach is a big deal, man. So they actually went and got head coach uh, from Montana State, uh, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Choate. Um, he has uh, ties to Pete Kwiatkowski um, there on the West Coast, um, one of the reasons they brought him in. A um, lot of questions, man, with this linebacker room, you know, uh, and that's going to go inside and outside linebacker. Uh, transfer in, transfers out, uh, departures, and, and obviously Joseph Asai, uh, you know, going to the NFL. Um, and, and then some of the recruits coming in. And then uh, what does your two deep look like? Uh, because I think you have a couple of starters there, uh, possible starters there, depending on the, you know, obviously some situations. Uh, but who lines up behind them, I think is, is probably what, what, we're, what I guess the unanswered question is at this particular point, um, you know, at the beginning of spring practice. So we'll kind of how, see how it kind of falls out um, at the end of spring practice going into the summer. But obviously, like I said, you had departures in Joseph Asai, uh, declared for the NFL draft, and then currently transfers out uh, a day away. A day away, you know, uh, currently in the transport portal, has an exit of the transport portal. And then Byron Bonds, um, you know, out of Fort Worth, Texas, um, went to University of Utah. And, and, and from, you know, from some of the stories I read uh, just recently, doing some really, really good things, man, at the University, or not University of Utah, but Utah State. Apologize about that, Utah State um, there. Uh, but doing really, really good things. And then transfer in and Ray Thornton from LSU uh, down there in the clean area, from the clean area down there. Um, but, Really excited about the, the linebacker room. Just a lot of questions. And then um, you picked up quite a few recruits in the 21 class. Uh, and Derek Harris Jr. out of New Caney, Texas. Uh, a four-star, Terrence Cook, out of, uh, Derek Cooks uh, out of Paraland, Texas. Another four-star. And then Maurice Blackwell, uh, another four-star out of there, out of Arlington Martin, who I'm really, really, really excited about, man. So I think they picked up some really, really good linebackers um, in this recruiting class. But your thoughts so far, man, on, on where we're going with the inside linebackers and outside linebackers uh, going into the 2021 season? Yeah, I thought Jeff Choke coming in, like you said, experienced head coach. I thought Coleman Hutzler did an outstanding job last year uh, coaching up this group and uh, was not surprised to see the, him leave because uh, he's kind of one and done. Um, Steve Sarkeesian, like you said, uh, trust Pete Kwiatkowski. Pete Kwiatkowski trusts Jeff Choke. Uh, they have a relationship. So, like you said, uh, Joe side left. He's probably going to be a, a first, second round draft pick. Uh, talking about Adele Dayway and Byron Bonds exiting the program. But then you get a guy like Ray Thornton from LSU who started for LSU, four games for them. And when he came in, he took uh, Osai's number 46. Uh, bigger linebacker, six foot three, 242 pounds from just down the street from me and Colleen. Uh, he is a senior. Uh, and like you said, we got some uh, slider, you know, linebackers last year, six two, anywhere from six one to six two and a half. Uh, anywhere from 196 to 215 pounds. So you're, you're not really the 230 to 250 pound linebackers, uh, but all guys who can run and, and, and play sideline to sideline as we did their commitment corners last year, kind of talked about that. Um, and like you say, you got some experience coming back. If, if Juwan Mitchell, we don't know his current status on the football team, but if he does come back and you got DeMarvin Overshown, uh, those 24 starts in between those two guys, 13 for, for Mitchell and 11 for Overshown. But like you said, if Mitchell doesn't come back, a guy like David Benda may have to step up and play that play that middle linebacker role. I think he's the most suited for that at this point in time with his experience and his body type. Uh, but that's what spring practice is for, to figure those things out. And like you said, it's it's more – you got an idea of who – you know DeMarvin, once he gets back from injury, is probably going to slide into that weak side linebacker position that he held last year. Probably going to be your, your captain uh, this year, uh, the way I see it on the defense. Uh, but then, like you said, you got some unknowns there. So – yeah, just my right off the top of my head thoughts about the linebacker core. Yeah, I think it really it comes down to to what does does Pete Kwiatkowski and Choke want from their linebackers? You know, um, you know, are they are they going to come down? Are they going to be coming downhill? Uh, you know, obviously, you, you know, uh, you know, run fits, uh, or are they going to have to turn in coverage? Uh, really, it, it, what are they looking for in their linebackers? You know, both from the inside and the outside linebackers. Um, so I think I think you have some flexibility. Uh, with some of the guys that you currently have on the on 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 the um, on the forty acres, and, and individuals like Marcus Tillman Jr., who's a redshirt sophomore, sitting at about 6'1", 240 pounds, another inside linebacker size body, um, Ray Thornton, uh, not much smaller. If you go back and look at really where um, 
Joseph Asai was at 6'4", 253 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Thornton's coming in at about 6'3", 242 pounds. Bigger guys, uh, yeah. Bigger guys, yeah. So to me, we had talked about pass rush before. Uh, you know, who's going to be your pass rusher? Um, and, and you got individuals like Jaden Hullaby sitting there at 6'2", 217 pounds. Not very big guys. Prince Dorba, 6'3", 220 pounds. I kind of see what they want to do as far as weight goes. Um, do they want to put more weight on them or do they want to keep them currently where they're at? Um, and, and then David, David Gabin is sitting there about six foot, 228 pounds. So a little, little on the shorter side uh, when you're looking at majority of these guys. And then Jalen Ford, 6'2", 223 pounds. And then Jet Bush, who got some playing time last year at 6'2", 235 pounds as well. Uh, but, you know, going back to pass rush, man, uh, and pass rush specialists kind of filling that role that Joseph Asai played, uh, not really just pass rush, but really, uh, you know, Joseph Asai made his name by he, really his motor. You know, his yep. motor never turned off. And, and, and he was running down, you know, uh, you know, uh, running backs from, from the backside. And I think that's really, really where he made his name, right? You know, because as a pass rusher, he went, to me, he wasn't an elite pass rusher. He wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And, but I don't think he was asked to do that as well. So, to me, uh, uh, I think when you come out of spring practice, who are they going to play at that role? Who moves forward as a pass rusher? Um, but I think a lot of that is – is I don't think the concern for an outside pass rusher um, is as big because I think you're going to have some guys that can, you know, obviously rush from the inside, which I think is more important um, to, to, you know, flush the, the quarterback out of the pocket. Your thoughts? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I think I heard Dane Brugler talk about it. I've heard Todd McShay talk about it, about Joe size, Joe size inexperience at that rushing position. Like he's not an edge at this point because he doesn't have, that's what's keeping him out of the first round. He doesn't have the experience as an edge. He doesn't have the the the, the counter moves as an, as an edge at this point, which is kind of – he's a hell of an athlete at 6'4", 253. And like you said, he's got a motor. He's a great kid. All those all those positive things, the things that are keeping him out of the first round of the, of the, of the draft is his inexperience at that edge. And, and they don't see a whole lot of moves, the guys that are talking about the draft, the McChase and the Brewers. Um, so I don't think you're, you, you got a big void there. Like I said, I think you got a big void with his overall – like you talked about, his overall game. His, his willingness to work, chase down runners uh, from sideline to sideline, his motor, uh, inter find himself around the ball uh, to, 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 to force fumbles, to, to recover fumbles, to, to possibly pick balls off or deflect balls. That's, that's what you're looking for. It's more disruptor than a straight edge pass rusher at my point, at my, in my mind, as you look to re replace his skill set. It's energy guy. You know, everybody, I think the, the entire defense ran through, you know, um, through Osai last year, the entire defense. And it, 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 and it's because of the energy that he brought each and every play, you know? Yeah. And, and what that does is energizes other guys, man. When, when Joseph Osai is, like, keyed in, man, and, and he's had some games where it's just, like, on a whole nother level. It's like it, it didn't matter what person you line up acro across from him. He, he's going to – he's going to take over football games. And that's what he did. At the University of Texas, he took over football games where you may not have had – uh, where you probably wouldn't have played as good as a defense if he wasn't there. I mean, so I think everything ran through Joseph Asai, and I think he, the energy that he brought uh, it just energized the rest of that defense de 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 side of the ball, if not the entire it, football team. It does, and, and position fit along with having – being in that room with him, I, I think is what allowed DeMarvin Overshone to really develop last year, is it, it, the position change itself, but then having – being with Joe Asai in that linebacker room on a daily basis and watching him lead and – and how he went about his business, I think, possibly affected DeMarvian. Uh, and DeMarvian kind of, as the season went on, became that second leader. That's what I felt like, was making the plays, uh, the zero blitz plays, along with Joe Osai. Uh, I don't remember, it's against West Virginia, I think, that similar play to what, what Osai did to Oklahoma State later on in the year. DeMarvian kind of zero blitz and found his way into making big plays as well. I think I think that's – you see a lot of the growth that DeMarvian overshone uh, through his – through his play, number one, his position change, and then his ability to be with Joe Osai in the linebacker room last year. I think helped him. And I think he made the biggest leap on the defensive side of the ball was DeMarvin Overshone. The biggest leap, man. Moving forward, it, the, the decision he went – when he went to Chris Ash and, 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 and asked Chris Ash, right, because that's – that's again, we talk about coachable athletes all the time. And, and for, for for a guy like DeMarvin Overshone who played safety, you know, probably his entire, entire life, um, to go to Chris Ash and say, hey, Chris Ash, where do you, where is my best fit moving forward? Where do you see me moving forward? Um, and he says, hey, d spin down, be a linebacker. You know, uh, I, I think to me that says a lot about DeMarvin Overshone, but to me the leap he made 
last year. Hell, he was a close second behind Joseph Asai to the best defensive player that we had on the on the on the football team. You know, I think so. be able to move from move from sideline to sideline the way he did. You know, um, and and it just bring that energy. You know, um, you know, obviously he's injured. He's going to be injured. You know, obviously he's injured. Um, he would be out for the spring, but it allows these other guys. Uh, that are in that room to be able to step up and say, hey, you know what? It, it's my time to shine. Let me get some experience. Let me get some reps. Because uh, you never know what's going to happen at that linebacker position. You know, that's one of those those positions that you catch a stinger, you catch a shoulder injury, you you know, you may be out for like one or two games or, or mm-hmm. a couple of series, man. And I think individuals like Jalen Ford, David Gabinda, uh, and Jaden Hullaby, uh, at that particular, uh, at that particular um, spot, uh, I think – We'll have an opportunity to, to get more reps. Um, the person I want to see step up probably the most at this particular point, because you haven't heard a lot from him, um, is, is Prince Dorber, man, out of, out of Highland Park. Um, yep. He's had an opportunity to sit by jo- but Joseph Asai, you know, at this particular point and, and watch the way that Joseph Asai goes to work. The side, you know, Texas decided to bring in a, gra- a transfer from LSU to almost take Joseph Asai's spot. To me, I think Prince Dorba uh, – needs to show uh, what his abilities are this year. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to kind of see where he goes uh, because he was a highly talented guy coming out of Highland Park. I just think he didn't have a lot of football experience, but I think, you know, having an opportunity to watch Joseph Asai, uh, I think is, has hopefully helped Prince Dorber and hopefully we see something from him this year. No, I, my last thought is essentially what you just said, and I'll sum it up, is, is with Overshone being out by injury, not knowing the current status of Jawan Mitchell, uh, he's not currently with the football team. Uh, guys like you said, David Gabenda, uh, Jalen Ford, Jaden Hullaby, Prince Dorman, Marcus Tillman, all need to be pushing for reps, all need to be, all need to, uh, be tra- challenging uh, for playing time uh, this fall. Uh, again, Dorba was a high four-star, possibly five-star with some recruiting services. Uh, the David Gabenda was an Under Armour All-American. Um, and like you said, we got three kids that are high four, four-stars coming in right behind them. Uh, so – between one, two, three, four, five, and those three, got eight young men, uh, all with the classification of a freshman up until Gabenda is a, a junior that, that really need to be pushing these top two, meaning Overshone and Jawan Mitchell and or Ray Thornton. When, you know, when, whenever they, they decide who's going to be those front two or three, uh, these guys should be in that discussion. So you you did the notes for, for this one, right? And, and coming into here, I, I think, you know, I was probably nervous. To me, this was probably one of the positions I was kind of worried about the most. Um, and I think it's just from an experience standpoint. I don't, I don't think it's from, uh, from, a, from a talent standpoint. I think it's more from an experience standpoint. Because if you look at the guys you currently have, and it's a long list of guys that are currently here that I think have the opportunity, to, you know, the, the talent to, to do great things on a Division one in a Division one program. You know, I, I think they're there, but I think it's really just experience. So, you know, kind of going through this list of, of names and who we brought in and who we currently have, it's kind of uh, uh, brought down the, the the worry just a little bit because I think the talent is there. I think it's just more the experience. And I think bringing guys in like Pete Kwiatkowski, who's obviously going to help out Jeff Choate there and bringing Jeff Choate in as your linebackers coaches, um, I, I think I think uh, developing these guys is going to be number one. And I think you're going to see a lot of these, a couple of these guys, man, uh, be developed. Uh, really, really well, man, and be able to take, uh, you know, obviously a Joseph Asai spot uh, moving forward, man. But really, really excited uh, about this about this position group moving forward into spring practice because I think it's the unknowns at this particular point. Um, so, hey, we hope you appreciate this podcast. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at TX Football Talk, on Facebook at Texas Football Talk, and on Instagram at Texas Football Talk. Uh, please uh, put your comments on what you think about the linebacker room, Who's gonna who has the possibility to take Joseph Asai's spot, um, and who the two deeps going to be. We appreciate that. Uh, please hit, hit the like button if you like the content. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you for listening and always, and welcome. Welcome. Welcome.